So it's funny. I usually wear the giant headphones. And I was like, this is fine, right? It's a podcast, you know, right. we, of course we do video, but like you're a streamer, you'll get it. But yesterday I'm on with this English author and he didn't have headphones. I go, oh, do we need to reschedule? I can mail you headphones. He goes, all right, here's the thing. I can mail you headphones. He, he goes, I do have headphones, but they just look so stupid. Don't people look so stupid with those things on? And I'm sitting there with my headphones on, like, I don't know. I like do that. I? No. He's standing right behind me, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> exactly. It was exactly, I was like, so what you're saying? saying is right i look like i look fucking stupid yeah exactly yeah (laughs) Yeah, i just thought like all right maybe i should get this earpiece and then so i put it on and you're and so now i'm passing the self-consciousness on absolutely from him to me to you that's gonna be forever this is gonna get passed down a million times from now now you're gonna and i I should wear these headphones because they're mine they're like t-pain edition Corsair headphones. Oh, dope. So I yeah. should be wearing them, but... Wear them. Wear, if no. you wear your headphones, I'll wear my headphones. You know I'm not going to wear no, them now. Too late. now the, after Those... the whole story and everything, nah, I'm good. I got to say, the pu- <laughs> purple is my favorite color in the whole world, as you can see by my background and everything. There it is. That was my oh. uh, my late brother's favorite color, and now it is mine now. So uh, every, I, I swear by purple now. Is that a grinder? <laughs> it is not. It's the case oh. for my headphones. <laughs> Oh, uh, it looks like a grinder. I was like, dang, that's a those are, that'll grind up a giant bowl if you <laughs> like, that's a big ass grinder. Nah, we got it. We got it. That's uh, funny. Oh man. Boom. But so are all the T Pain edition headphones purple? Is that like or is it They're like a blue. It's like a bluish. Oh, it's bluish? Oh, okay. It's hard yeah, to Yeah, my room is purple as hell right now, so Oh, so it reflected everything on the looks headphone. Purple. Yeah, everything that's right. is purple. Yeah. These nice. are purple. These are actually purple. Those are cool. Are those yeah. custom like in ear headphone yeah. things? Yeah. I, that's I had these made, and when I when they put the like the wax in to do the mold or whatever, I hate that shit. It was so weird, and the audiologist goes, "Okay, it's gonna be quick. I know it's awkward." And he goes, "By the way, he goes by the this is an older guy. He goes, by the way, you have the hairiest ears I've <laughs> ever seen." <laughs> it fucked me. Up. I hate getting these done because obviously I grew up super fucking poor. And our uh, we lived in a trailer, and uh, our trailer was like infested with roaches. Oh, so God. and we didn't have like a lot of beds and mattresses and shit, so we had to sleep on the floor a lot. And we would have to like plug our orifices with like toilet paper just so we didn't have like roaches crawling into our shit all all, all the time. And I have now developed like some kind of fixation, not a fixation, but a, it's just a bad connotation with shit being in my ears. Yeah, association. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now, anytime there's like something happening with my my nose or my ears, I just I, uh, it it drives me nuts. And getting these done and molded, yeah, it was a terrible experience. Yeah. So for people who don't know, what we're talking about talking about those like in ear like earbuds, but custom made for your ear, and they pour some kind of like silly putty type stuff in there, and then it comes out hard ish. And then you can mail it, and they're like, "Okay, this is." It's like getting your. Te- Remember, you can go to the dentist, you get it. Yeah, get, you get mold. Yeah, because I think most people don't have the need for a custom audio right. gear, but everybody's had like their teeth imprints <laughs> taken <laughs> for their. Weird have you ass- seen the new? There's this new product, and it's in ears, but they, you customize them yourself. Oh, so, so like you, it just. You so shove you put it in them, there, and it just does its own thing. You put them in your ear, and it it heats up the wax that's on the end of it, and then it conforms to your ear. That's and that cool. you can make your own custom fit in ears. It's that crazy. that's cool unless it doesn't come out afterwards because it's like too <laughs> tight. That's what I'm well, they, always they afraid made, of. They made Jaden Smith do it first, so oh, that's fine. <laughs> He's a good test dummy. <laughs> right. The good news is we figured out one more way that this isn't gonna work. <laughs> right. Thanks, Jaden. <laughs> he figured it out for us. He did yeah. it. Right. But yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Oh man! All right. So, so first, I gotta say, man, some of my research on you was surprising. It's like, so first of all, who gets in a golf cart accident? Like, that's not <laughs> something you hear every day. Golf cart accident. That was, um, man. And and you know what? What the stupid thing was? I had just gotten the governor taken off of the golf cart, and it was, oh. um, so, yeah. So in order to make it faster. Right. I don't know why I needed my golf cart to go faster, but uh, yeah, it was, I was young, I guess. I, well, yeah, <laughs> you're, you still are. I mean, you're, what, are you 36? Is that how 36, old you are? 36. 36. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Going, going 37 in September. Amazing. Not excited. Super not excited at all. 
Try uh, 41. It's less exciting. <laughs> I, I'm, spoiler alert, it's definitely less exciting every single year now. Um, yeah. yeah, my wife just hit 40, and she's, she's reminding me every day. It's, yeah, uh, she's like, she's, at least you're not 40. Right, she's making yeah. sure I know that. Um, <laughs> but no, we, um, yeah, man, we were just, I had this golf cart. It had hydraulics on it, 22-inch <laughs> spinners, uh, speakers everywhere. I don't even know where that golf cart is. I do know where it is. It's at the bottom of the lake you tipped it into no, or whatever. I sent it, I sent it to get fixed. At a um a golf cart repair shop here in Atlanta, and they were just like, I don't, they don't make anything for this golf cart anymore. This is really old. And I was like, you know what? Just keep keep the goddamn golf cart. <laughs> so now there's it. somebody else who's like, this is T Pain's old golf cart. Absolutely, no Bounce question. It up and down. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Hydraulics is running. Everything is good. They got 12 <laughs> batteries in that mother. It's just too much. <laughs> it's too much. But yeah, it it, it worked out for somebody. I'm glad my purchase actually helped somebody get some kind of bragging rights. But yeah, I got my teeth knocked out. I had to get oh. had to go to an emergency dentist. I didn't know that existed. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. Good. I, I guess it has to. But that's scary, especially you're a singer and a rapper, so it's scarier for a guy like you or a guy like me to have something happen with their mouth. Like if this someone's happened. like, "You're gonna lose one eye," I'm like, "Okay." But if they're like, "You're gonna lose your your tongue or all your right. teeth," I'm like, "Oh this shit, what am I gonna do?" On tour. I was on tour Ooh. when this happened. <laughs> oh, man. I was on tour with Lil Wayne. I, I skipped one show. I went to the emergency dentist uh, that night. He gave me a new set of chompers. See, here's 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 the good thing about having grills. Because I had a, I had my grill with me. And I was, they because they couldn't figure out what my teeth looked like before it all got busted <laughs> out. So I was okay. like, guys, guess what? I had a perfect mold of my teeth in my pocket right now. Right. So here's it's this. made out of gold and diamonds and shit, right. but it's, it's still <laughs> but the same shape. The inside is exactly how my teeth were. So they they took that, made a mold of my grill, and then made my teeth exactly how they were before the accident. And it was ah, uh, that's that's uh, it's one advantage. Imagine, <laughs> imagine having that come in handy, and and then you go to your mom, you're like, "Remember when you made fun of me for this?" Right, Turns exactly. Out it came in handy. Came in friggin' handy. Everybody, Great investment. everybody, very envious. And then I skipped one show, and then I was back on the road the next day. That's a lot of work. I mean, I assume that hurt for more than just the one show you skipped. You just dealt with the pain while on stage. I actually didn't. It didn't hurt a lot. It really? didn't. It, yeah, I had a hole in my lip, and I kept putting my pinky through it. Ooh, that's. Not a small hole. It was no, oh no, it was not because keep like in a mind, tooth my, went through it. Is my, that yeah, why? Yeah, my mouth ooh. was closed, and I. It's like I got curb stumped because the golf cart flipped over. I my mouth hit the curb, and my mouth was closed, and my tooth went through my mouth, and then it broke off on the outside of my bottom lip. Oh my gosh! So that's... my tooth like went through my lip and was on it. I have my, bro my broken teeth somewhere. It's like in, like, in a, a jar. Box. Yeah, it's like in a box in, in, in like a, a drawer somewhere. It's weird. <laughs> so yeah, so you got rid of the golf cart, but you kept a broken, cracked in half tooth. I don't know. Yeah, I have the I have the, the, I, have the I have the shoes that I wore that day. I have the shoes with all scuffed up shoes, and it was crazy because it was it was in an arena, and in order to test out just how fast my golf cart was, I had I was going down like one of those uh, loading bays, like where the trucks would go down, and it was yeah. steep. It was steep. It was not <laughs> something, and the brakes of a golf cart aren't meant right. for 22 inch rims. Or so. <laughs> for 40 miles an hour or whatever you were going, right? Like they're like for 15 miles an hour, right. seven miles Barely, an hour. Barely, 12 probably. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, so that was that was an eventful day. But I do have a lot of memorabilia from the accident. It's pretty goddamn cool, actually. S slash scars, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the other thing I got to say that was really bizarre that I was like, I got to ask him about this is, okay, this is 2007, so it's been a while, but... T-Pain refused to shorten his performance at Radio One Spring Fest concert in Miami, which caused police presence to become escalated <gasps> oh, backstage. Oh, yeah. I went to jail that night. <laughs> so who gets arrested for performing too much? Like, I can imagine they're like, <laughs> suspect is a black male, mid-30s, wearing so, a 34-pound gold chain, requesting backup. So they couldn't press charges because the whole situation was, they said if I let Uncle Luke come out, and uh, let a couple people from Miami come out on my set because I was closing, and they wanted to, you know, they wanted the show to be as big as possible. They said, "Let these people come out. It won't cost. It won't. It won't count towards your time on stage." Cool, absolutely. You tell me I can still perform my show. Let these people come out. I look like I'm the big guy on campus bringing out the legends. Absolutely. They come out. Obviously, it counted towards my time. Uh, the police 
came on stage while I was performing and started unplugging my DJ stuff. What? So the only thing that's still going is the microphone. I'm pissed off because not only are they running behind, they're telling me that everything's going to be fine. I can do my whole show. Uh, can you bring out these extra people and we'll add more time to your show? They didn't do that. They didn't honor their word. Uh, so I, <laughs> so I said, they can't arrest all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words. And then I threw the microphone into the crowd. So, because it was just so much going on and I wasn't, the most sober person in the building. Yeah. So um, I threw the microphone in the crowd. So they called that inciting a riot. And oh, as I okay. was going backstage, I was just screaming. I was talking. I was like, these people suck, blah, blah, blah. And then right, I don't know what made me pick these words right when I saw a police officer, but I looked a very tall, like a seven foot tall police officer right in the windows of his soul. And I looked, I looked right up and I said, fuck the police. And I just kept walking. <laughs> and I just kept walking. And then that is what started the whole thing. They 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 started, we we walked a little faster, and then I heard somebody behind me, the police coming, the police coming, the police coming. And then we just started running. Everybody's running. We don't know why we're running. We don't know why the police are coming. But we're running. So, <laughs> so and they, they gather everybody up. They take my homeboys. They uh, One of them slammed my homeboy on the ground and put his face in the exhaust of the van we were trying to leave in. Oh, that's that's dangerous. So, yeah, yeah, yeah super, super safe. Um, but we did get in the van, and we told the driver to take off, and the driver was so afraid that he didn't move, and they yeah. got in the car. But um, I had actually gotten a look at the driver once we were saying, go, 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 and he looked like, he had the goddamn measles. There were so many red dots on his face. And they were like, if you, if you put this car, if you put this van in drive, you, you're going you're gonna to get a, a, a face full of tasers. <laughs> so, so I understand why he didn't leave. Oh, like red laser dots on his face. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there were, do, <laughs> there were laser dots everywhere. They're like, you're going to get a face full of taser if, if you put lucky. this thing in. Right, if you're lucky. Well, so, sniper um, rifle. Yeah, the nation national is out the van. Um, uh, they couldn't charge us with anything. So we stayed, uh, we stayed in a holding cell. All the, uh, inmates knew who I was and they were like handing me sandwiches and shit. It was fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we, we, um, I would say that was a good time. I got a free mugshot. That is, that, that's, that's so ridiculous. Really, well, it was the taxpayer's cost, do you think? Free, free uh, photo shoot for me. Yeah. <laughs> you should put that on the, like the cover of your next album. Is it like, should just you know, be that, just be that. It, it, yeah. I look, I, I was skinnier, so that, that, that's a plus. You got that going for you. That, yeah, I mean, 2000, 2007, we were all skinnier back then. <laughs> Wasn't as many vegans in 2007. I feel like yeah. that was, that was a feat. That was a goal to be had. <laughs> I've heard sometimes that you wear, uh, fit like fake jewelry, like costume jewelry, which, which to me, that's probably the most sensible thing I've heard in a long time. And I think, cause you gotta be pretty secure with yourself to be open about this. I, I've heard you talk about it, but it, it makes sense, especially because I see some of these guys and I'm like, there's no way that that thing you're wearing is less than like 300 or $400,000. <laughs> yeah. Right? Some people don't, some people actually don't wear fake jewelry. And it, it it baffles me because there's nothing else you can do with that afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's good for pictures, good to be seen and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I'm not going into a crowd of thirsty people with a million dollars of jewelry on. Yeah. You got, you got to, I mean, and plus I've gotten robbed a lot. Yeah. So I've learned. So yeah, I've gotten robbed a lot with real jewelry on. I, I've had my real jewelry taken. So I'm like, okay, maybe it won't feel as bad if this chain was like, Seventy dollars, yeah, <laughs> instead of <laughs> instead of seventy thousand dollars. So right. you know, when I'm going into crowds and I just need pictures and stuff like that, pro it's probably gonna be fake. I, now, if I got beefed up security or anything like that, and 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 I'm just, it's like an event. Yeah, I can wear my I can wear my real jewelry there. Um, if I'm going to Target, real jewelry, everything's real. Nobody's gonna rob me in Target. We gonna rob me in Target? I guess that's true. Yeah, just well, rob Target. Like what? There's, there's so much better stuff. It's just Rob Target. What are you doing? <laughs> if you're that, if you're that hungry for something, just take stuff out of here. Like the, the the thing that you're trying to do with my jewelry, you're just gonna end up coming to Target and buying their stuff. 
Like you're gonna go sell my jewelry to somebody, and you're gonna go to Target and buy snacks. Just go right. Just go take the snacks. Skip the skip the process. Like so. cut out the middleman. Yeah, right. You're cutting out the middleman. But no, it's um, it's it's situational. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely situational on what I want to do. If I'm just like going to a studio or going to somebody else's studio, I don't know who's gonna be there. I don't know who I'm gonna encounter on the way into the studio. I don't know if they have a gate around the studio. I'm I'm driving one of my cheap cars. Like you know what I'm saying? I'm driving my I'm driving a Honda Accord to your studio. I'm not coming in a Rolls Royce. I don't know. I don't know what neighborhood your studio is in. I don't like. You know what I'm saying? So, it's definitely situational. But if it's an event and I got security, the event has security, and the security aren't friends with the crowd, then yeah, I, I can wear real jewelry at that point. And studios are never in a good neighborhood, though. I feel like ever, ever, ever. ever. Yeah. Because if you want a good price, you're gonna you're gonna have to you're gonna have to take a loss on the location. <laughs> I, I think yeah, that's probably it. Also, there's like a street cred thing, right? Like if you're with like. I don't even know. Who did I meet? Like, uh, uh, too short or something. He's not like, oh, yeah, come to my Beverly Hills studio. He's like, drive right. to the airport and then go down <laughs> this, like, dirt road. And then there's a building It's always with a by the airport. Yeah. Why is it always by the airport? It's always, How do you get always. anything done? Nothing's insulated in this place. You bought a warehouse and put speakers in here and a microphone. Mm -hmm. This is not a studio. Why yeah. is it by the airport? I, I can hear planes in the background of my song. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Why am I recording here? It's always by the airport. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's a, that's a very not not super desirable area, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Prices always, are, prices like, are you said, like you said, you're parking next to their car and it's like, oh, they drove a really nice car. Or you're like, <laughs> why? Have, why are they driving a Ford <laughs> right. Fiesta? What do I not know? Maybe I shouldn't park right. this Tesla should, right here. Like, absolutely. It, yeah, I'm out. I Drop me off, babe. I'll call you later. Park drive somewhere else. Drive north. You gotta go. Yeah. You gotta park at a, a decoy parking lot. You need a second secondary parking lot exactly. to get robbed and get broken into. And I can drive my Honda Accord into the primary. And it'll be what. Good. What about uh, when you're wearing vi jewelry for like a video? I heard that it's not good to have real jewelry in videos because it doesn't look as good as fake jewelry does in videos. It, Is that no, true? no, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Real jewelry actually, uh, we call it dancing. It dances more. Oh. It dances more when certain. You know, like when you go in, into like a K Jewelers or uh, yeah. uh, uh, Jared or some or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the lights they have in there make the diamonds shine a very different way. Because the oh, second the clever. second you take it out of mm. that store, it looks like shit. So it's the, it's a, it's it's the lights that they use. It's the uh, you know the, the 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 presentation. You know nobody wants to touch it. That's why when you know they could easily take a ring out of the thing and just hand it to you. But that's why they bring out that little tray, the little velvet tray, and they they place the ring on it and all nice and it, it it's just holding itself up. And it's it's the presentation plus lighting. Uh, that makes real jewelry dance a lot more than fake jewelry. Sometimes, fake. Sometimes fake jewelry can dance though, but m more not than yes. <laughs> that, that that makes sense. I you, like when you go to a watch store and you're like, oh, that one's cool, and they're like, hold on, and they put on like white gloves right. slowly in front of you, and they're, they're they're like looking you directly in the eye while they do right. it, right? Yeah, give and me they a second. Open up I'll... the vault. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it's like a little like, a, like steam comes in, like it's, it's like, like an a cryogenic. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, bro, I just want to see the chrono. Like, I thought I had a map on it. Like, I don't yeah, know. we just got yeah. this this morning from Iceland. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? I just I saw you bring this is a swatch. Yeah. I just saw you bring this in here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's something you can get on Amazon for at the price. But yeah, it's like oh, this has this has an emergency alarm on it. So anywhere in the world, if you activate it. <laughs> This rescue team will come and get you, and I'm like, "Wow, is that real?" Like I saw a watch right. with that. Is it huge? And I go, "Wait a minute. Why would anybody who's like a mountaineer wear a watch that has like diamond and crust? You're not wearing this on anything where you could get lost and have to be rescued by Navy SEALs. Like, Absolutely, you're just not. they're gonna take it first yeah. of all because there's one. You're dead. That's that's one. Then uh, they're gonna take that. But no, yeah, it's um, yeah, they they have like, I mean, I've seen like million dollar watches that look like total pieces of shit like no dance no kind of no no show but like if i buy a watch it's gotta like it's gotta do it's gotta be something you know what i'm saying it's gotta have some kind of characteristic that's gonna make it like oh that's a cool fucking watch you know what i'm saying like if i buy if i'm gonna spend more than 30 dollars on a watch yeah it's gotta i don't know man 
it, I, 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 I don't even know. It's just remember when those uh, Nike Flex bands came out? Like, I wore that more than Rolexes because it did something. You know what I'm saying? Like, when people were like, I don't know, oh, you get your steps in today? I'm like, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and it, it like came up. Uh, yeah. Like, you know, Fitbits. I fuck with Fitbits. Like, you know, I'll, I'll wear a Fitbit over a Rolex. Like, if it does something. If it does something cool, like they they start coming out with holographic shit, I'm I'm all the way in the in the business. Yeah, That's I think <laughs> I, I'm with you, man. I'm like, I if I need to tell time, I got that on my phone. I don't need to just tell time. I need there needs to be maps on here. I need weather reports. Not one watch in my entire household is on the correct time. <laughs> None of them. <laughs> They're never said. Not this can't be. What, what time is it? Right now, uh, one twenty six p.m. Pacific. Nope. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this is wrong. This Purely is really, this is, this is really wrong. Yeah, it's just it's like, come on, man. This is and this is safe. All this is real. Yeah. So this well, is, you're in your house. I'm in my house. So this yeah. is safe. Unless you're not gonna rob me, are you? You're not gonna rob me. Okay, cool. We're good. Yep. <laughs> my assistant's not gonna rob me. <laughs> yeah, no, she she, she already did. Yeah. She already did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The job's done. We're, right. we're the, job, the job is done. Oh, you thought you had Bitcoin. <laughs> you don't have any Bitcoin. <laughs> Shouldn't have put me in charge of your wallet, you stupid idiot. <laughs> I, I know. Uh, I noticed that you don't take yourself too seriously, which I think is great. I, I think there's something cool and endearing about that. I mean, you're, you're in, like, the Lonely Island video. I'm on a boat, right? And it's, it seems like most of your tracks are about love or partying as opposed to, like, I don't know, murdering people or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so far, anyway. So far, so far, I think we can, yeah, we can safely, safely say that. Mostly. Uh, and your tats are <laughs> meme tattoos, I heard. I, can't, I haven't seen them, but I, I assume I they, do they have say they're some. meme I tats. do have some. This one says you don't have to like me because Facebook. Um, <laughs> I got, got uh, I got Jackie Chan there. Oh, nice. Why Jackie Chan? Um, I do this a lot when, when I don't want to hear what people are saying. And it's kind of like a, a message to like stop talking. Like, what the fuck are you saying? What the fuck are you even saying? Nice, like a rush <laughs> hour reference. Right, it's yeah, it's just like, what, what the fuck are you doing? Um, I have Pan Pan from uh, We Bear Bears. It's a cartoon, and uh, my wife is mixed with black and white, and I call her my panda. And she, nice, yeah. Cute. So that's for her. Um, I guess that's my label, Nappy Boy, right there. Oh yeah. Uh, remember fucking famous? Remember the famous F? <laughs> <laughs> no. Remember? Wait, was it Travis Barker? He had that fa uh, that that F that that famous. It was like a clothing brand. It was called Famous. But anyway, vaguely, my, I vaguely yeah, remember. My, my, my you remember name, it well because it's on your right, forum. Right, my yeah. real name is Fahim, and I used the famous F to. I, I don't ah, know okay, I that. that was fucking stupid. There's a lot more. I got a a clown lady on my side. <laughs> it's, it's, I got a lot of stupid fucking. Time. So uh, my my goal was to get a tattoo from every continent that I that I went to. Um, I didn't have any ideas for the tattoos. I just wanted to get a tattoo in every continent. But so you show up and they're like, all right, I'm just I'm in the mood to draw like this. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, all right, cool, man. <laughs> they're like, let us let us uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. And I'm like, well, I'm drunk, so let's yeah. just let's get, <laughs> let's get to this it. This buzz is going to wear off eventually. We don't have that kind of time. <laughs> we don't have that kind of time, so yeah. let's go ahead and get to it now. I think we can just go. Uh, but now it, um, it's semi-worked out, I guess. Kind of? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, so far, so far, so good. I, I heard you didn't live with your wife for, like, three years because you were working, but but to me, I was like, is it because you're working, or is it like, I'm having too much fun, no one's keeping no, me in check? No, it was, um, I, I didn't want the responsibility of being married because, um, I think it was Lil John that told me that, like, if people find out that you're married, like, it's going to be bad. I'm like, I don't think really? that's... Yeah, I mean that's that's like the the sentiment of all of every industry. Like, make yourself available, make make people feel like they have a chance, and you'll be better off. Uh, I didn't I didn't believe that, but at the same time, it was like I didn't want the responsibility of marriage and children because it would have it would have because it would have deflected from you know it, it would have taking me off the, the path of being number one. I just wanted to be number one. I wanted to have all the hits. And if I would have had to change a diaper in the middle of recording a song, 
I feel like I wouldn't have did that. But that I, I realize now how fucking unimportant that was. <laughs> like, you know, when when I actually go back to you know realizing how much I could have been involved with my family and thinking about my kids and my wife and really being involved. Um, yeah, that was stupid as hell. <laughs> that was. It felt like um, if I would have been if I if I would have had the married life and the, the you know having the the kids life uh that I wouldn't be able to be an artist because that's just what was portrayed to us at a young age and you know if you want to be successful you can't be tied down to anything and that's just what I thought was the solution so I had my wife and my kids living with my mom and then I'm in a house in Atlanta by myself and my hype man and you know my uh, the, my artist that I was that was signed to my label and stuff like that and we were having parties, of course, but I mean, I was still working, you know, and, and I was just work, 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 work. And everybody would be having a party upstairs and I'd be in the studio. And, like there was literally a point that um, my, my, my homeboys came in the studio with a plaque saying that my album had just went double platinum. And I was like, oh, that's cool as shit. Let me finish. I'm trying to finish this thing, though. And like work, like, like finished work. Like, well, I gotta finish. I gotta finish. Yeah, that's my album went double platinum. That's cool as hell. I was working on these harmonies though. I need to finish that. And, and like, it just was. I was so focused on doing more of that that when it actually happened, I didn't care. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I was so yeah. focused on being number one. The, the you know, the, the I always, I always used to say the hardest thing about being number one is staying number one. And that stuck with me so much that I didn't even care when I became number one because I felt like I needed to work harder to stay there. And, uh, you know, everything else was a distraction. So I didn't want to have my wife around. I didn't want to have kids around me because my wife is doing the work with the kids. I do the work to make the money. That's the dynamic. That's our family dynamic. And that shit was so obscure and it was just so stupid. <laughs> and I realize it now being around, you know, being around my family more and, and actually becoming a family man that that this is this is the most important thing yeah you know yeah uh, this music shit doesn't mean anything when i saw mike tyson uh lay down his belt on his pool table and said this means nothing to me you know my family is more important and when i saw that i was like oh shit maybe i need to i might need to rethink some shit mm -hmm. <laughs> mike tyson is laying down his belts because that was that was the most important thing to him at one point and then i saw him yeah. lay his belts down and that that was that that was the moment when I saw that interview with him. He was just like, "This is nothing. What does this mean to anybody? What 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 does it actually mean?" And the interviewer was like, "Well, it means you've done something in your life." It's like, so for who? <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, that makes sense. I yeah." That how, makes how, sense. Old, <clears throat> how old are your kids now? Man, I'm about to have an 18 year old. Wow. Okay. Not excited. No. <laughs> no. So we got uh right now we got 17 15 and 13. Okay, yeah. So cuz so the rest one is legally outside your control about to right. be and the other ones are just de facto outside your control because Yeah, my they, son, yeah. my son is is 15. He just he's uh he's on a date right now. The 17 year old? The 15 year old. The 15 year old. Okay. He's on a date right now. That's uh that's gotta be kind of a head trip. I got a two year old, so I I'm not there yet. It's um it's gonna fuck you up. It's gonna yeah. fuck you up. Um I didn't think it was a date at first until he asked for um cologne. Oh yeah. That's and the... then it's and then it's like, oh, oh man. I know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Um it's weird. It's gonna fuck you up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about it. I, I mean, I got a little girl on the way too, so I'm a little bit more nervous oh, about that. Oh, you're about to. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so my oldest is my daughter. Yeah. So she's 17. She's about to be 18. Um, she she doesn't do dates. She's a gamer. <laughs> she just like. That's but my fortunate. Son, I think my son you. is like, I'm gonna go finger something right now. I need to <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> 
<laughs> I just don't know what to think. I don't know what he's thinking, but you know, yeah. just seeing my son go on a date, and I know how I used to date, and I'm fucking awkward as hell. Yeah, so I don't know funny. if he's like, I at least want him to do a good job, man. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, get get, get it get it done, brother. <laughs> get it done. Uh, it's got to be kind of weird for your kids to like be in their friend's car and they're turning on like. The bartender, and right? Like, nah, because my, my kids, my kids don't tell their friends who their dad is. Really? Yeah. The, like they go to school. Like nobody in their school knows that really? because they just don't want to be bought. They just don't want to be bought. People find out, but they yeah. like like when you when you when they do find out, my kids are like, dude, I get it that you know, but. Mm -hmm. Chill the fuck out. Yeah, bro. chill out. So, so nobody comes over and is like, yo, you know your dad looks a lot nobody. like t -Pain. You ever you ever hear that? He we don't, we like don't, we they, they they don't come here. My oh, kids okay. have like Stockholm syndrome, so we <laughs> <laughs> this pandemic really did not do a good number on them. Uh, so funny. they go to other people's houses and you know, uh they you know, they gotta show pictures and stuff like that and they'd see, but uh, you know, we we don't get a lot of visitors. Because people just don't know what's happening here, so there's no interest. Like if if the kids knew who their dad was, they would be like, "Oh, I'm just come, I'm come, come, come to your house." Right. But you know, being that they don't know, it's like, like is well, it who's who, Bentley is in the who's Bentley with those rims <laughs> of spinners on is in the driveway? Oh, is Akon over again? Akon's <laughs> right. having dinner. Right. Exactly. So they don't know. So, but you know, we just let them go to other people's houses and let them explore that way instead of. Having people over here touching my shit. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. I'm like, God, lock them out of my studio. I only have right. some things I care about. Don't let exactly. your stupid friends touch it. Um, <laughs> back, back about 15 years ago now. I know you, you had some ups and downs financially, right? So you mm -hmm. like the, the the I believe the PC term is you went broke. <laughs> <laughs> the technical term. Exactly. <laughs> yep, that's how they said it back then. Yep, for sure. Uh, but how how broke is broke? Because a lot of people are like, I'm broke. I only have three billion. I had thirty. You know, like <laughs> no, uh, broke was broke was uh, uh, Wells Fargo sending me emails saying your account had re has reached zero dollars. Oh wow! Like broke was uh, me asking my manager, can he buy food for my kids? Oh like, shit! It was yeah, and this is from like upwards of ninety million dollars. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I had I had wow. Uh, yeah, this. I mean, having it be the most money I've ever had in my life at one time was like ninety million, and then right. going to and pure zero. Wow, nothing. So, is that like a? There's a. Uh, there's always a combination of factors, but I'm wondering, is that like? There's got to be like a stack of irresponsible purchases. Oh right? yeah, bad investments. Uh, listening to uh, would be realtors. <laughs> You know, people are like this is gonna be a great buy. You should buy this house over here, and nobody, nobody's bought it yet. But that's an opportunity. We can flip it. We can do all this, and we did that to like four or five houses in Miami. But I had never seen. I still to this day had never seen the houses. You know, like I, I don't know what they looked like. Uh, I kept pouring money into rebuilding the houses, knocking them down, rebuilding them. Um, I bought my childhood home. That I had to sell, at the, you know, once I got oh, rid of man. the money. Like, um, I, 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 cars, I had 43 cars at one time. How, how like, many? 43? 40, 43 cars. Where do you even put 43 cars? You don't. You don't. <laughs> you just don't. They're, They're just, just around. Up. It's just around, and all the gas goes bad in all of them. The Ferraris oh. don't crank up if they're not driven every day. They're fucking... <laughs> the Bugatti is stuck in between two Chevys. You can't get it out. It's just like, it's just... <laughs> You know, uh, you just don't. Um, no, nah, there was a lot of irresponsible. I mean, because I was young, like, what? What am yeah. I supposed to do? Like, right at the beginning, you you sign me as a nineteen year old and just hand me forty million dollars. Like, what do it's, I? Even I don't know what to do with this. Grew up, like, you could grow up with like <laughs> two parents that are financial managers, and you would right. still screw still. up that yeah, money God, at that yeah. age. There's no way to to not do that, but no. it um it I mean obviously it was a lesson learned, but you know uh, learning how to get it back was that that was a task. <laughs> I, I'm sure that it was. I, I mean, I'm in fact I'm curious about that, but I'm I am curious also what was like the first so wildly irresponsible purchase where you're you still think about it and you're like why did I buy that? Yeah, there's houses and stuff, but like there's got to be one thing where you were like 
okay, that was definitely like top five dumbest things I've ever spent money There's on. There's two. Okay. There's two of them. One was a chain. The big ass chain. Oh, the one that you see in photo, like a bunch of photos and stuff? The big ass chain. That was literally done on a dare. The chain. From, a, from a stranger. Oh, God. I was at a show. I was at a show. Chilling on the side of the stage. Uh, I don't even know who the guy was. I've never seen him again. Never talked to him. Never seen him before that. This guy walks up to me and he says, T-Pain, I bet you won't get a chain that says big ass chain. And $400,000 later, I went and got that shit just to show him. I don't know who it is. Still don't know to this day. Have no idea who the guy was. Never seen him before. Still to this day, just to impress a stranger, I spent 400 grand on a chain that said big ass chain. What happened to the chain? Uh, it's up. It's up. Uh, well, I melted it down to make oh. other chains. Okay. It like and then I melted those chains. Chain. I then I melted those chains down to make the big ass chain again. Wait. You, <laughs> that's this is even that's even more ridiculous. So you it's worse. Yeah, it's, worse it's worse. Yeah, it, it, it's it, the, the plot thickens. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so I melted down the chains I made out of the big ass chain to make the big ass chain again. I won't say why because I think we know where this is going, right? Because but. it's a big. Well, now it's a staple. You know what I'm saying? Now right. it's like a a, a a moment in time that kind of reminds me to not do stupid shit. So you still have it somewhere? Oh yeah, it's up in the closet right now. Yeah. It's oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's like whenever it. you're like, oh man, that house looks so nice. You're like, let me go to my. I just need to take a <laughs> peek at something real quick. Big ass chain? Should I buy that house in Miami again? It's like a not, magic eight ball. Not unless you want another one of these. <laughs> Staring at you every time you put on your socks. <laughs> it's like a, like a goddamn magic eight ball. Um, yeah. So it's it's up there, man. It's up there in the closet right now. Um, the second thing is the thing that I thought I was gonna buy and how I found out I didn't have money. Oh, okay. What was that? A house. Okay. What? Just one house. One of the houses. The second house. <laughs> so the house that I live in now, we have we're like really back far in the woods, and the people that lives. So like, let's say if you're on the street, mm -hmm. let's say you're on the street, you can see the houses. So there's a house here, a house here. My house is in between those houses, but behind them. Gotcha. Okay. The person on the right moved out of their house, and there's a path that goes from my house to the front house. I wanted to buy that house just to have as another house. Okay. <laughs> as one does. That sounds logic. One, why That's not? sound investment logic, yes. Right, babe, babe uh, if you need me, I'll be in the second house. Right. Up the, up the hill. A little right. bit. Watching so, TV. Same thing we're watching now. Same, same thing we're doing uh, in yeah, here. Yeah. Same thing we're doing in here. Just in a different house. I'll be doing that. But I was going to move like my artist in there. Yeah. I was going to, uh, you know, I was going to like have that as like a, a nappy boy entertainment house. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I hit my accountant and he was like, oh, no, you can't do that. And I was like, what What do you mean? I'm, uh, I'm super rich. And he was like, uh, no, you are not. Not anymore. <laughs> Oh man! So, <laughs> so, <laughs> no, you are not. Um, and that was like the moment I was like, "What? Okay, you got to run me down some some P and L here." I need to you see a spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> I need to see a spreadsheet right now. I need to see a fucking. I need to see a, a QuickBooks immediately. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he ran that down, and uh, yeah, I could not do that. And I was uh. like, "Oh shit." Um, what does that mean for the house I'm in? He was like, uh, oh, yeah, I was going to call you about that. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> and he was like, you need to start doing something real different real quick. And, yeah, I started looking into myself and figured out how to fucking get all my shit back and get rid of some cars. I only have nine cars now. Only nine, yeah. Only nine. Two per each member of the family. <laughs> something like that. I got to get more soon. Uh, my kids don't want to drive. They think, my kids think they're going to be able to take Uber everywhere. Yeah, that doesn't really, I mean, <laughs> I technically keep trying to possible. I keep trying to teach them how to drive. 
And they're oh, like, they don't no, even we, know how to drive at age. They don't, they, 18, I keep trying to teach. I mean, granted, the shit I'm trying to teach them to drive in. It's like you don't want to learn how to drive in a Rolls Royce. No, like that's the only. And and they damn, I'm damn sure not going to teach them how to drive a manual shift right now. Uh -uh. And that's all my race cars. So uh, so at the at the at this moment, I'm trying to. I have a a, a driving simulator in the other room, and I'm trying to teach them on that. So that, that way they can wreck. They can do anything they want to. The shit moves around. Yeah. It, it, you know, when you hit something, they actually charge for it. It's cool. So they still don't want to do that. They're like, no, we're just going to, we're just going to just Uber everything. What? Yeah. I mean, you, you should, you got to get like a Volvo from like 2013 <laughs> and you're the, like, my, just, the, if this uh, thing gets wrecked, whatever. Right. They don't want to drive. My daughter, my oldest doesn't want to drive, but she wants a Mustang. Like an old one, like a no, 70s Mustang. Sense. Oh, and I like, see. You can, What? <laughs> Can you what make you it self-driving? No. Just, just want to look at it. Oh my god, a self-driving fastback? Mm. Like a Cobra GT, except it just drives itself. You might have, you might have just did something. It's possible. Let me know if you want to invest in one of my <laughs> ideas, oh. DK. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. That was... uh, <laughs> Hey, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, check out the Jordan Harbinger Show podcast feed. There's a lot more just like this. You can find the Jordan Harbinger Show in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to the show. You mentioned you found out when you like that you were going broke or that you went broke when you talked to your accountant, but did you just not, you like never logged, I don't even know how you check, a, there, obviously it's not all in some so, checking account, but you just never checked any of that At stuff. the time, my accountant was also my manager. Ooh, that doesn't sound probably oh, no. like a good idea. Wasn't. Okay. Was not. <laughs> it was the worst idea, but Ooh. he made me feel good. He made me feel good. He was very, uh, very persuasive. Very persuasive. He, uh, anytime we would talk about business, like, you know, managerial stuff, he would, be very confident about it, talk loud and shit. Anytime there was numbers that come up, he would whisper. It's like, okay, so we're doing this thing uh, for the Super Bowl. We're gonna be out there. It's gonna be the 23rd, and uh, we're gonna do this thing. And they're offering you $75,000. So when you get it, and it was like, oh, this guy knows what he's fucking doing. He knows when to, when to do it and when not to do it. <laughs> so, um, no, but it was very convincing. Uh, he was super Jewish, so that helped a lot. Uh, Street it was, cred wise, yeah, like yeah. you know, like why not? Like that's that's the thing. If you're a a a, 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 a black rapper, a black singer, you 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 get a Jewish accountant. That's like the thing. That's just what you do. So it was um, it was it's like having forty two cars. You just and and it forty two or forty three, whatever it was. He let me do that. He uh -huh. let me do that. So obviously, this guy knows what he's doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like yeah, sound investment logic. Car number right. 43. Now, hold on. You may have too many vehicles. <laughs> it was all based on what he let me do. Right. You know, it was, <laughs> I was like, He's this like guy you is, know, this is your money, right? This I guy can't knows tell you what shit. to do, but I can tell you when you don't shit. have any more money. Yeah. It's your money. It's your money. I'll just tell you when you run out of it. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. But no, it was, Um, I mean, it was a good relationship and it seemed like it was going well. And it's, and you know, at that age, I, you know, I, I'm thinking I'm going to make money forever. If it's this easy, all I got to do is fucking sing what's on my mind and sing what's in my heart. And I get money for that. Oh my God. I'm never going broke. And then. Yeah. So. <laughs> so yeah. I, I mean, did they just kind of tell you like, all right, your first album was a success. You're successful now. Yep. Now it's just strippers and swimming pools for the rest of your life. <laughs> That's it. I mean, they didn't say that, but right. It was like, this is very easy. Nobody's losing here. This is great. And I think they were on the same uh, wave as me and, and you know, the, 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 the same euphoria of, like, this dude just, he just shits, hits. Like, it just, it's just easy as hell. This is good. We got it. We got a great client. We don't have to, we don't have to, we don't have to worry about shit. We can just do this. So we just kept going on that wave, and then that wave ended, uh, as all waves do, and... We didn't know we didn't we didn't prepare. Right. So it was uh I mean it was bad decision making and um desperation, you know, and stuff like that that was really fueling what uh what we did for the next year and a half of trying to figure out how to get it back. And then I came to the conclusion that it was just a bunch of bad decision making. I can do this better myself. I'll go find my own team, I'll go do this. And uh yeah. Once I figured out my own habits 
I figured out my own uh, 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 wrongdoings and and you know the, just the bad things that I was that I was uh, getting uh, into my brain and, and really getting accustomed to. Um, once I figured that out, I was able to really get back in like two years. It took me nine years to lose all that money, and it took me two years to get it back. That's amazing. So so you lost like. 90 million, whatever, give or take, in, in nine years. And then you got, you basically made it back in two years. I mean, that's actually incredible. Yeah. Because, I mean, because I did the, the main thing that made me lose it was my attentiveness. It wasn't, it, it was just, I just wasn't, I didn't care. Uh -huh. I wasn't paying attention to anything. And, you know, me looking back and just seeing where I went wrong and where I was, uh, where I was actually putting my attention to, I can see now that those things were uh, distractions and diversions and things like that. So now that I, I look into myself and I see where I need to be paying attention to and, and actually keeping an eye on everything and watching what I do, it's, I mean, it's child's play at this point now. It's just like, if I would have, if I would have just taken this approach at the beginning, that whole era, that whole point in my life would have never happened. Uh, yeah, so it was out of sight, out of mind kind of thing, right? Exactly. Just like, forget it. And I had a guy. I had a guy. I was like, he'll, he'll take care of that. I'm not going to run out of money. He's not going to let me run out of money. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I got a guy. <laughs> I, am, I, I am surprised that he let you run out of It wasn't like, hey, man, seeing this happen a bunch, you're going to regret it. You should really invest a bunch of this. It, the getting's not always good. Let You'd think he would be like, let me manage the investments for you. Then we'll all make yeah. money for 50 years. And well, most, like, of the, most of the investments was, was his. So what do you mean? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's embarrassing to say, but it, most of the shit that um, that's OK. Yeah. I mean, he, what, no one's judging you for this. Like you're right, most of the shit, he had, me, most of the shit he had me investing in was like secretly his companies. Oh, that's crooked as hell. <laughs> like, so he's like, yo, you know what you should do? You should buy this property in Miami. And secretly he owned the property already. So I was buying it from him. Right, like, you know what I'm like saying? Like, it's a good you know deal. Look, it's a great right, it's deal. It's a great deal. Like, so it was like just kind of secretly getting double paid, you know, because the money, the money I paid for the property goes to him. And then the money I make from selling the property to somebody else, he gets 20% of it because he's my manager also. Right. So, you know, it's like, yeah, it's a little double debit, but it's stuff, it's stuff like. You, you you start to realize little things every now and then, and and you look back at it like, man, I was fucking, I was stupid. <laughs> yeah, it's, it still that. sucks to get robbed by somebody though. That sucks. <laughs> that that somebody know? that you really trust and really see as a friend. Yeah, and not just like a business partner. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> did you think you could make it back at the time, or were you like, okay, I'm screwed. I'm never going to be successful again. Oh, I thought I was going to die. I really? thought I was going to be homeless. I was like, really being prepared. To be working at Subway and somebody's being like, aren't you a fucking team, man? And, and you're like, like, nope. Nope. Pickles? I, <laughs> you, you, want some more, you want some more Chipotle ranch? Yeah. <laughs> I was like ready. I was like preparing myself to do that. Because I was so crazy on like alcohol back then that I didn't think I was ever going to be like okay enough to function alone. You know? Uh, I looked at myself. I didn't remember. I, it was like four years of my life. I don't even remember. Like I was just so crazy on on alcohol, and that was the the bad. Like that was the, you know, the the part where I didn't have money. I was like, well, if I'm if I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die drunk as shit. <laughs> like I was just I was I was prepared to just be out. I was prepared to just be like, this is this is it. But I'm gonna have fun doing it. I'm, I'm just every night. I'm just gonna go crazy every night, and that just turned into uh, turned into depression, turned into a bunch of shit. And and after that, I was like, wait a minute, I can probably do this if I just stop going crazy every night. I'm fine in the daytime. I can just do stuff then, and then I just started coming up with routines and ways to really look at my money. And then I started, you know, asking different. Uh, uh, different accountants, like, how do you do this? What, you know, just really soaking up game. And then I came to a point where I was like, somebody tell me how I keep all my fucking money. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. And, 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 then, and then I got the game from a bunch of a different different accountants. And uh, I was like, okay, I think I got it. Can I do this and drink? Mm -hmm. Yes, great. 
Okay. <laughs> you can make your own drink, and then people will pay you. And then boom, yeah. yeah. And then yeah, that's we made a. I, and now I have a drink book. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. Uh, I'm wondering about Grammys, right? I know you won a Grammy, and I, like I'm wondering if how does that change things for you? Or is you mentioned before you got the plaque, and you were like, all right, whatever. I'm wondering, does it change your career a bunch, or is it kind of just like prices like, go up for prices sure? Prices go up. Prices for, for go you to perform. You just mean? anything at this Everything. point, yeah. Because once you put Grammy Award winning in front of your name, yeah, especially yeah. if you got multiple. Because now I got six. Yeah, you got you're, you're stacked up now. I just wondered the first stacked one must have been like crazy. The first like, one was surreal. Mm -hmm. Is a word I can use? Oh um, yeah. I didn't really believe it. I didn't really. Be, I, I didn't know where it came from. I didn't know what I did to deserve it because I got a Grammy off of doing shit that I was just doing every day. It was just like this is normal. And and if this normal thing had me win a Grammy, why didn't my other stuff win? I was very negative on myself at the time. So I didn't have like a positive view of winning a Grammy. I'm like, why didn't my other regular shit win it? And why did, why did you guys wait till I got with somebody else to do the shit? So I was very negative about it, but I mean, prices went up and things started happening a little bit more. I got noticed a lot more and uh, yeah, then I went on to win a bunch more and then yeah, it, it just kind of kept, it kept happening. But the first one, I was very negative about it. It, it's amazing how our view of ourselves can color anything. Like people think that they can mm -hmm. get something external that will help fix it. And they're like, no, if I get more money, whatever, I'll, I'll be happy. And you're like, I literally have a Grammy and a double <laughs> platinum plaque and everyone knows who I am. And I'm still like, eh, this sucks. Right? This sucks. This shit sucks. Why the yeah. hell didn't you give me 13 of these? Because when I won my first Grammy, I had already been nominated for five of them. Oh, okay. In one year. In one year, wow. I, was, I had five Grammy nominations. And I was like, because all the five Grammy nominations were just me on my own. And the one I won was with somebody else. And I'm like, y'all didn't give me a Grammy for my shit. But when I get on a song with somebody that you know who they are and they fucking, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, wow, I was he so famous. Uh, <laughs> so I was just so negative about yeah. everything. And it didn't... It didn't help my mindset at the time, but uh, it worked. I did get more money for stuff, so that was cool. I I heard <laughs> that you didn't get paid for features and songs like those, like can, I don't cameo type situation. I guess I didn't want to. I didn't, didn't want, want to. to. I didn't want to get paid for that. It was like two was, years. Was, you were just like, "Nah, I'm good. I'm just gonna show up." I was so honored to be in the presence of people that I looked up to. I was like, "You're gonna pay me for this?" No, I was, I'm like happy to be here. You don't have to pay me. I'm fine. And then I wasn't fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was, uh, I mean, I did get a lot of uh, reciprocation for a lot of the things I did. I did get, you know, features on my album. I mean, my Three Rings album was packed with features and most of those were returned favors. So, you know, it was, uh, not only was I super popular at the time, but, you know, a lot of the people on that album were, just returned favors that That's I had did. And, you know, and not and a lot of them wasn't even even swaps. Like, you know, like T.I. was charging 200 grand for a verse at the time. And I had did a hook for him earlier. And that that's not even uh, on Chopped and Screwed. Ludacris was charging 250. Per verse, but also I had just started charging 250 per verse. So I was like, how about we just don't pay each other and it just I'll do one for you. And that's when I did one more drink for Ludacris, and then he did Chopping School for me. So we just, we were just like, we can, you can give me two hundred fifty grand, and then I'll give you your money back, or we can just not do this at all and just do the song, and we'll be fine. So <laughs> it was, um, it, it worked out a lot of different ways, and I think that that generosity I had for a lot of artists actually worked out in my favor. Definitely. Yeah. I, I, on this show, we talk a lot about like dig the well before you get thirsty, you know, help other people. Don't expect anything in return. Don't don't be attached to getting anything in return. And then usually when you do that, like 50 times, you know, 40, right. 30 of those people are going to go, all right, I can help you back. 20, you never hear from right. again, but maybe they can't do anything for you and you don't Absolutely. even need anything. You don't but, even need it. Yeah. 
Absolutely. you don't think about what's in it for you, then later on you're like, hey, I got a new album coming out. Will you do it? Boom. Um, they look like a real a hole if they were like, nah, I'm good. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, there were some a holes, but I'm sure. Know. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like They're said, always a holes. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be 100 percent every time. So yeah, I, I, I definitely went that route, and it actually worked out for me. So I I heard this the the bartender song that everybody knows, the one I was just butchering earlier was <laughs> you made that at a at like a crazy resort in Jamaica called Hedonism, and you, Hedonism you, three, yeah. the third one, the third one, right? The first two just weren't just hedonistic were <laughs> enough. <laughs> hedonism three, that shit was fire. Except for that one thing. Yeah, it's, that, so tell that, me that, about that because that's this is a weird this is a weird story. <laughs> like by all accounts, right? So, um, I was uh, well, I was at Hedonism. I don't know why I was there. What? Do you, so I, t tell us what this place is because it's not like a usual vacation. So it's this not place, sandals. Uh, Heden is not sandals. <laughs> it's like sandals. Let's just say it's a nudist sandals. It's it's a nudist resort. Like, I mean, everything's happening at this place. You you look out your window. Your ass naked, looking out your window with a cup of coffee, just people fucking by the pool. It's just like, just everything's happening all at this one hotel. And you're just like, this is nice. <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> you're just ass naked at your window with your hand on your hip, cup of coffee, window <laughs> wide open. And you're like, this is... It's a cool place. What are, what's, <laughs> what are those animal sounds like here outside? Ah, I see. Bob from accounting. It's usually very old people. Really? That super shouldn't old surprise couples, me, but it does. Yeah, Super old couples that, that want to rekindle something or just like put some more flair into their shit. And um, yeah, so it's just everybody's in this big resort. Everybody's ass naked. And um, yeah, I, I set up a studio in my, <laughs> my hotel room. <laughs> And uh, when I set it up, I figured out that I forgot my microphone cable. So I couldn't do that. And uh, the DJ that was DJing the entire resort every night, he was there every night. I was like, dude, you got to have a microphone cable. There's no way you don't. And he was like, I'll give you a microphone cable if you record a dub plate for me. Now, if you don't know what a dub plate is, that's when basically, like, let's say uh, I would redo All I Do Is Win for this DJ and put his name in the song. And he wanted me to record that at the resort. And I'm like, well, I'm trying to record this one song. I just need your microphone cable. It's not that serious to where you need a dub play from me. I feel like it's kind of unnecessary, a little bit unprofessional. It's a little bit of a, it's like asking somebody <laughs> for like a $50,000 thing to get a ride to the airport. You're like, right. no, yeah, like, come on, airport. man. Like, it's kind of unprofessional. So he did give me the microphone cable. But he did also threaten me with a butter knife. And I was like, I'm very disappointed. And he was like twirling the butter knife in his hand. I'm really disappointed you didn't record my dub plate. I'm like, dude, give me whatever. I'll I'm email done with it the to song. you. Right. I'm done with the song. Uh, you can have your mic cable back. So no, but I, I recorded Bartender in a hotel room of a nudist resort. Wow. And it was um it came out good. Yeah. <laughs> it, it paid for a new microphone cable. It was absolutely a new microphone cable worth of song. Wow. So <laughs> but but then something kind of weird happened. And I'm the only reason I'm trying to get the story is it is it's so oh, Bob. bizarre. Yeah. Bob. So after I recorded that song, I was cool. We went to the bar and there's police tape everywhere. And this one little area right by the bar. Um I go to the bar. I'm with my security, uh, Boogie. Um, we 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 go to the bar. Everything's all inclusive, so we don't we're not paying for anything. But um, there's this one one guy at the bar. He's looking pretty down, you know. And I'm like, dude, everybody's ass naked, man. Pep up. What the fuck are you doing? What are you, what are you crying at the bar? You crying at the bar at a nudist resort? What the fuck's wrong with you, dude? Get up. Come on. Let's let's have a drink. Get this man a drink. And I'm just getting him drinks. I'm getting him drunk and blah blah blah. And um, you know, he introduces himself, says, my name's Bob Everlin. Uh, I'm so glad you guys came into my life. I was at this bar having my last drink because I don't know if you see all this police tape. It was very obvious, very, a lot of police tape. But my wife just died in our hotel room. Oh, man. So he says, I was at the bar having my last drink. This was going to be it. I was going to go kill myself, but you guys came into my life and kept me alive and I'm just glad to see that there are good people still in the world 
Uh, I, I'm very sad in my wife to have a man. You guys put a spark in my life, and I want to. I want to stay. I want to stay here. If there's going to be more people like you guys, I want to stay here. And I still talk to him to this day. He actually texted me while we've been talking. So, <laughs> yes. Good for him. I mean, that's, <laughs> and good for you. That's an amazing thing to do. I, I think a lot of people might have been like, oh, this is kind of a drag. Like, I'll leave this guy alone. It's awkward. Right. But you had been at this point, is this post-depression where you were like, I know what you're like, some of what you're feeling right now. I went to this place to try and to try to get out of my depression. I went to this place. I'm like, oh my God, see a bunch of titties, a bunch of old titties. Uh, everybody cool. Everybody cool with their dicks swinging out. I'm, I, I, this got to be a cool place. This has to cure some kind of depression. I was like, cool, let's go. And we went. It, was, it wasn't It was as glorious as the pictures made. <laughs> no. The models are slightly younger than the actual client. Slightly clientele. younger, slightly younger. A, a hot 30, 30 years younger on the pictures. Um, But. No, nah, I mean, but it was still a fun place. We we did a lot of activity. We still had a lot of shit going on. So I'm like, nobody should be sad in this place. And I saw him, you know, I saw the guy, Bob, being sad. And I'm like, dude, there's no way you're sad here. Like, I was actually, I thought I was cured at one point. I was like, this is this is a fucking great place. Everybody's happy. Everybody's doing what the fuck they want to do. Everybody's got literally rocking out with their cocks out. Everybody's fine. This is great. What the fuck is going on? And he was the only sad person, and, and I felt my responsibility was to make sure he felt better. And, uh, yeah, then we found out all that, and now we we still talk. And I, uh, uh, he lives in Orlando. Uh, he works at, like, Universal, like, resorts and shit like that. And, uh, yeah, I, I had a show in Orlando, like, a couple years ago, and it was the first time I had seen him since the, uh, the you know, the, the trip. And, man, I think it was, like, 11 years had passed since I actually seen him face to face. And he was like, yo, I'm Bob. And I'm like, oh, shit. And we embraced. A lot went on. He cried. I cried more than him. Uh, <laughs> it, was just, it was just a lot, man. But yeah, we still talk today. And he's literally texting me right now. It's crazy. Good. So. Th I'm glad to hear that. That's a, that is kind of a cute story and kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a bummer. Of course, it's awful that his wife passed away, but you were there mm -hmm. like right in time for that because yeah, who knows what he was going to do did he tell you how he was going to plan to kill himself after no, his last no, drink no he oh, was just man. like he was like this was my last drink i was oh, here man. having my last and he doesn't drink like that he he drinks beers he's yeah. like a beer guy you know yeah, um, he's, bo he's a bob from orlando he's not he's like a, a bob from orlando or, so he's yeah. a beer guy and he was drinking like straight rum like jamaican rum like mm. he was he was like if i'm same thing i was doing if i'm gonna go out i'm gonna go out drunk like he was, he was doing the same thing I was doing, and I kind of, I kind of saw it. I guess, I guess I kind of uh, identified with it, and it, you know, unconsciously, I, I kind of, subconsciously, I, I kind of identified with it, and I think I saw what was happening, and was like, I, I think this guy needs some lifting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like you were in a very unique mental or emotional place to spot yeah. that like right away. Yeah, and the crazy thing was nobody else was sitting around him. Like, it was literally, it was me and my security, and there were two chairs empty next to him. It was like, person, empty chair, Bob, empty chair, person. So it was like, set for us to surround him with this love, and man, I, you know, we love Bob, man. Bob, Bob is, Bob is Bob. Shout out to Bob in Orlando Bob. <laughs> and his and his beers, his, and his uh, beers. craft beer obsession. <laughs> most likely. Yeah. His friend IPA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, exactly. Exactly. His Coors lights. Right. Um, so you you seem happier now and a lot of like by all accounts, you you you've kinda gotta be. I mean, I, unless you're really good at covering it up, it's hard to tell from a conversation, but you're sometimes kids are man, up, you're doing, sometimes you know? that's why I, that's why I'm that's why I'm not friends with any actors. Why is that? What like, do you mean? Because like, oh, like they, they cover can... their feelings? Yeah, of course. Like, they're just really good at it. I'm really great. Good oh, at I'm doing <laughs> great. Love it. Yeah, go home, take like seven pills no, and go to sleep. No, I, I am so much more happier now that I'm not chasing anything. Because you got to be so serious when you're chasing shit and when you're trying to have a certain level of money and you got to portray this, uh, you know, th this level of, of success. And I, it, it like, for who? You know? This is the same way I stopped smoking cigarettes. I used to smoke cigarettes. I used to, I used to chain smoke cigarettes. Like really chain smoke. I used to chain smoke cigarettes to the point of I used to light up cigarettes with other cigarettes. Like it, <laughs> like I was going crazy. And 
when I started wanting to stop smoking cigarettes, I would pick up a cigarette and, and think to myself, why do you want to smoke this? And if I couldn't come up with a good excuse, I would just put it back. And it's the same thing. It's the same approach I take now of why do you need people to know what you're doing? I don't. Are you are you satisfied with where you are? Do you have enough money to keep your family going? Do you? Yeah, I'm good. Oh, okay, cool. You you don't need to do more than what you're doing then. That's this these these are the internal conversations I have with myself. You know, uh, you don't need people to think you're on top of anything. Do you need to, like why why would why would you need people to know? Um, I guess I'll make more money. Are you not making enough money? Yeah, I guess. Yes, I am. Uh, do you need more money? I did want that jet ski. Yeah, that daughter, she wants a Mustang. Those I things did, are expensive. I, I did, and then I, I do say dumb shit like I did want a jet ski or like a boat or something. And it's like, do you live around water? In the woods. I need a jet ski <laughs> in the woods. <laughs> Can't rent these. It's impossible. <laughs> they fucking Mobius over here. God damn, why do you need a jet ski so goddamn bad? Um, so, yeah, no, I mean, but I have these internal conversations yeah. that, that that help me make better decisions. And it's just, it's, it's, it's so much more fun when you're doing it for yourself as opposed to making sure everybody knows you're doing it at all. You know, it it, it it really helps to just be content with where you are and how you're doing. Because the thing that the the the, the thing that people get misconstrued when they when people say, don't forget where you came from. I never I will never forget where I came from. But I will I will die on the hill of saying, I'm gonna do everything in my power to not go back there. <laughs> so it's not the fact that I'm forgetting where I came from. I don't want to be there. I know where I came from, and that shit was horrible. Yeah, I can never forget it. Like this I can't is not it. this. Is, yeah, this isn't like a a, a a goal for me. Like when when you know, because it's a it's a big thing in 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 the in the rap community and the in the black community. Oh, you can't come back to the hood. Thank God. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my God! Hell yeah. That really? Am I not allowed back in there? Cause that's that's great. I I don't. You don't want to be there. Everybody says, "Yo, when I get some money, I'm gonna get my mom out the hood." What? Okay, so you don't want to be there, and you don't. You know, you don't want your mom to be there. But I'm supposed to make sure I stay there all the time. No, what the fuck? That's not. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's that's fair. I didn't want to be there. You don't want to be there now. I'm okay with not being able to come back. <laughs> and I, I'm not going to forget it. I'm not going to forget it. I respect it. And everything that happens within it, I get it. I understand it. But it's not my goal to go back. It was my goal to leave. It's everybody's goal to leave. Everybody's goal to leave. Yeah. They, what's what's the analogy? People call it like the crab bucket, right? Where like the crabs are crawling out and then the other ones are reaching up. And they're obviously just trying to get out. But they buy the pulling, way They're that. pulling everybody back down. Right. Pulling, their, pulling all the rest of the crowd back down, trying to get to the top. And yeah. ultimately, nobody gets to the top. Right. You just end up, you end up in fucking boiling hot water. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Nobody gets out unless you're that one that gets on the floor and nobody wants to touch you because... Th this analogy went <laughs> off the rails. This metaphor went... It was oh, you've never dropped you never dropped a crab on the floor? No. Uh -uh. Okay, so, it's, so when we cook crabs... You got to dump them out of the actual bucket. But sometimes one of them doesn't go in the bucket. Like swings away, yeah. And then it gets on the floor and it's just fucking, what's up, bitch? What's up, bitch? Oh, and you're, it's like fighting. Back up, bitch. <laughs> and it's just like, you can't you can't put it in the pot now because one made it out. One made it out and it's going to clamp your fucking fingers if you try to put it back in. So then you got to take drastic measures and fucking kill it on the floor. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Now it went, okay. Now it went off the rails. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> and that is why people don't make it out of the hood. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make it. It's a 360. It's a 360 thing. You'll figure it out. Oh man. <laughs> 
I, uh, I I read in the news lately, and this is I don't want to dwell on this too much, but I'm curious. This thing with Usher, where he like woke you up on tell yeah, tell, yeah. tell me what happened. Can you tell us what happened? Because I read the articles and I'm like, is this bullshit? Is this real? No, no, that. no. That's real. Usher woke me up to tell me that I ruined music. So he, we're, you're like sleeping on an airplane, right? Sleeping on an airplane, sleeping off a fucking hangover because I was an alcoholic at that point. Uh, sleeping off a hangover. His kids were running all over the plane, all jumping all over my chair. And I had a window seat, and his kids apparently wanted to see out the window, so they jumped in my lap and fucking just, just looking out the window just <laughs> across me. But uh, the, the the flight attendant woke me up and told me that Usher wanted to talk to me, and he was like, you ruined music, and boom. I, I mean, small talk before. It wasn't so cut and dry, but at one point, yeah, the sentence he said out of his mouth was, you ruined music. Wow. You, oh, no, you fucked up music is what he said. Like he didn't say ruined. I'm trying to keep it clean, but he said you fucked up music. Yeah, that's <laughs> awful though. Like to to wake someone up and then say that. I mean to say that at all, but it's. Like I mean, that, I could have seems... been. I've, I, and I could have been fully awake. Yeah, I could have been on fucking five hour energy, <laughs> and 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 that still would have been pretty fucked up. Yeah, but, that's weird. But I understand what he was saying. I I, I, I think he just chose his words very poorly. poorly. Yeah, <laughs> super poorly. Um. He was saying that I shifted the industry to a standard that didn't fit what he was really good at. Yeah, it almost seems like he, you know, it's a threat because he can sing and he's like, well, crap. Now everybody thinks they now can every, do this Now attitude, everybody but... can sing. Right. It's, right. It's, it's, it's exactly what he's saying. That's, that's, that's exactly what he said. He was like, I was, I was special because I could sing better than everybody. And I got, and Usher has perfect pitch. You can literally call out a fucking note and he'll just sing it. Like you can before you even play it on the piano, or you can play a note on the piano and he'll tell you what note that is. Wow. He has perfect fucking pitch. This man has never needed auto tune in the studio. I've worked with him multiple times. Usher is one of the greatest fucking singers of our generation. And he was basically saying, I was special because I had that ability, and now everybody has that ability. You made me normal. Did he say that to Cher? Because she's the one who popularized auto tune in the yeah, beginning. Yeah, I didn't know. No, I don't think so. But the thing, but the thing is, she popularized it, but nobody copied her. Nobody else right. did it after her. Nobody else was like, "It's the new Cher sound. I need to do that on my record too." It was, it was, it was frowned upon in the music industry if you sounded like anybody else at that time. You couldn't have. I think the only time that it was okay to sound like anybody else was like the disco era. Yeah, that, like all disco yeah. sounded the same. Like that, like I'm That's doing, true. I'm working on a project right now called Disco Sucks because of that whole campaign that was happening. And I feel like that's what happened to me. And I'm not dwelling on it, but it was a, that was a major part of my life that, you know, I feel like the whole Disco Sucks movement was kind of like the auto tune, the anti auto tune movement. So, uh, you know, having, having people copy, even when Roger Trotman did the talk box, nobody else was doing it. You know, uh, fucking even, even, but even if they tried to do it, like Eric Clapton, he did it with a guitar. He put a spin on it. He did something different, but it was not widespread that nobody changed an industry with it. Even Kanye did it before me. Kanye did auto tune before me, but nobody copied him and nobody wanted to sound like him and nobody was making hits with it and nobody, mm -hmm. uh, nobody, it, it didn't change the industry. When I did it, it changed. The industry, yeah. it, it, it birthed a whole new genre of music. So I understand the being the face of it. Like when mumble rap happened, Lil Yachty oh, yeah. was the face Good of God. mumble rap. Lil Yachty was, a, Lil Yachty was by far the least mumbly rapper at the time, but he was the face of it. And he got the brunt of mumble rap. He got the brunt of the hate of it. So... I understand that the the person that's the most sought after for doing a thing and is seen, is seen as the originator would get the most hate for it. I understand that. But to say that you made me not special anymore. Was, yeah. That's not it, my fault. It's no, <laughs> but it's good that you realize that because it's it's almost like he blamed you for a thing that was his own insecurity at the time. And he, like you said, and he chose his words poorly, but it's also like, it's like shame on you for shifting this industry. Now I'm having a, a harder time. I might have a hard time 
It's like he didn't say you don't have any talent. He didn't say your stuff sucks and I don't like right. it. He was he, did, he didn't like, say he didn't say he didn't like it. No, he didn't say he didn't like it. It's a good. It was a. It was a good thing, and I, I like I said, I still respect Usher. I still, he's one of the greatest singers of our fucking generation, but he chose his words poorly. Like I said, when it, it's the same, it's the and it it goes back to me running out of money because I was shitting out hits. I was just. Anytime I open my fucking mouth, I got a million dollars. But once that got normal to people and it stopped making that money, I had to figure out how to do something different. Usher was not ready to do that because every time we got an Usher release, it was a smash. But if you're not keeping up with what with what how the industry is changing, you it's not gonna work anymore. And oh fuck, it's not gonna be easy. Damn it. You made this not easy anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Almost then in a way, running out of money was like a really good way to teach you agility in the market and teach you Absolutely. how to survive. Absolutely. No question. No question. For sure. Yeah. I had to fucking <laughs> agility, acrobatics. I had to fucking, <laughs> I had to fucking, I had to flip everything, man. And the, the thing that I realized um, very early on was nobody saw, nobody had seen my personality. Nobody had seen that I was actually an okay guy. I I did meet and greets a lot in my early stages, and I would always hear two things. One, I thought you'd be taller. How tall um, are you? <laughs> I'm fucking... Five ten, I think. Oh, okay. I yeah. thought you'd be taller than that too. I'm five ten. <laughs> <laughs> my wife is fucking four eleven. This works out really. Yeah, nice. my wife's five feet tall, so we're, 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 <laughs> we look fine. Everyone's like, "Oh, wow, your husband and you are so much. He's so much taller than you." But I'm like, "Yeah, don't stand <laughs> yeah, next yeah, to me with shoes on." That's how that works. So yeah. I always heard I thought you would be taller, and I thought you'd be an asshole. Oh, really? You seem super uh, nice in like the boat video. Everybody, like, you're like a good Because, because guy. I started, because that's when I started showing my actual personality. Oh, uh, okay. You know, when I was, uh, when I would do interviews or when I would, uh, you know, do videos or I would put on this act that I thought we had to put on. I would talk differently because I, I thought if you didn't sound stupid, you weren't cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. know, so, you know, just, just the fact that I enunciate my words now, like the, the, the way I do interviews differently and, and the things that I, the things that I decide to say, the things that I actually know, I actually show my intelligence and, you know, uh, remember when you, I, I don't know if this was even a part of your culture, but like in, in our, in our culture, in the hip hop culture, like you get made fun of for going to college. Oh yeah. Like, like, yeah. like if you come out as a rapper and you went to college, like that's a bad thing for some reason. Mm -hmm. What the fuck does what the fuck is that? <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> crab, <laughs> the crab bucket, man. The crab you don't bucket. Need college. <laughs> what the fuck? You went to college now. For you educated you, people. You're not from the streets. You're not from the streets. You went to college. No. No, no. <laughs> it's what? <laughs> that's I don't so I never actually understood it. I just participated in it. So now, uh, you know, seeing that people can actually see my personality and I can uh, get on Twitch and actually show people that I'm a, I'm, I'm a good person and, you know, haven't been, have, haven't been that, that person that everybody thought was going to be an asshole and I'm more approachable than, than other artists. I mean, I've been in the airport with multiple artists and people come to me and they're like, can I get a picture? And I'm like, you don't see... You don't see all these big ass artists around me, and, and I've literally had people tell me, "Yeah, but you seem like the only one that actually would take a picture with me." And it's just like the demeanor on people, you know, the demeanor and, and the expression on people's faces that just make them unapproachable and and very off putting. That it's like, I'm just happy now. I'm just so happy that it's like, yeah, come on, picture's gonna take probably. Two and a half seconds. If you know how to work your phone, yeah. Usually they don't know how to work their phone. That's the problem. Usually. Yeah, yeah. B Nobody you know who knows. Bill Nye the Science Guy is? I definitely know who Bill Nye yeah. the Science Guy. Yeah. So, <laughs> so when people come up to him for selfies, he's like, "Okay, make it fast." But if they're like, "Okay, hang on," he's like, "You need to learn how to walk and take a selfie." Like it's like his pet peeve. <laughs> he's a very nice guy, but he it's gets so like bad. so. It's so what I do? On, so what man. I do when when people are like, "I want to take a picture," I take the phone. I've seen every phone in existence. I know how to work all of them. 
Everybody takes pictures with different phones, especially when you like take pictures in Japan. And yeah. You're seeing all these weird ass phones and shit and stuff like that. I've seen every phone in existence. That's just really give me the funny. phone. Give me the phone. I'll take it. Boom. It's only it's literally one button. Two, maybe. Two to get on the camera app and then one, bam. That's take funny. Because the there are a lot of weird ass phones like in Asia, like Xiaomi Red Note 3. <laughs> or like, how do you use this? What's a Xiaomi Red Note 3? Yeah, I had to take a, a, a picture on a phone that was uh, like a teardrop shape. That's cool. Yeah, it was crazy. The, yeah. the camera was at the top of the of the teardrop. It was. Yeah, like, you know what? I'm just gonna keep this phone. I'll text you a photo. Though. I'm just gonna, I'll text <laughs> you ya. from the text me when you get a new phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know the number, right? Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. So it comes down to knowing where you are and being content with that. Mm -hmm. And knowing that you're okay, because I could, I could be a lot richer. I could be going to space right now. Yeah, you, yeah. I could be going to space in a giant dick or. <laughs> with Jeff Bezos. Or yeah. I could be stuffing my nose and my ears with toilet paper to make sure roaches don't get in. I think I'm fine where I am. This yeah. seems, this seems okay. <laughs> hey man, that's that's a great way to look at it. And I think that's a good place to on that note, let's let's wrap it up. That thank you so much, man, for your time and your candor and your vulnerability, Absolutely. man. I th I think it's this is a real pleasure. I think it's important to be honest about all this stuff that you were Absolutely. honest about. And um and don't forget to text Bob back, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I gotta fucking <laughs> call Bob. Jesus yeah, call Christ. Bob. Don't let Bob linger. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I really appreciate this, dude. This is uh this was great. This was this was kind of free therapy. <laughs>